I'll just do a quick introduction while they're getting this set up. Uh, so yeah, now for something completely different. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about open standards at all because I'm learning about it today as much as most of you are, I suspect. Um, so yeah, we're just going to talk about another uh, different success story uh, involving the Banyol Bushland Management Department and uh, digital monitoring of our works in the field using the Connect software. That's there. And there it is. Um, so yeah, uh, so just to give you a bit of a, a background to start with, uh, the Banyol Bush crew consists of five teams with two ranges in each team. Uh, and between us, we manage a bit over 300 hectares of bushland reserves. So each team has specific sites that they manage within that. Um, we receive a certain amount of guidance in our management from management plans and from our supervisor and coordinator. But we're also accorded a lot of independence to make our own decisions in the field based on what we're observing. So we can sort of set our own priorities to some extent and decide what techniques we want to use to achieve our outcomes. So bearing that in mind, uh, there's a few reasons why it's very important for us to be monitoring the works that we're doing. Um, the first one is so that we can track those techniques we're using and get a sense of what's working and what we need to work on improving. Um, the second one is so that our supervisor and coordinator can get a good idea of what we're actually doing out in the field. Uh, and the third one is so that our coordinator can then in turn um, justify the funding that we receive. So the finance department at Banyul is not generally made up of conservationists. Uh, and they don't necessarily have a great sense of what it is that we actually do. Uh, and historically, we haven't actually had a lot of uh, information that we can use to kind of quantitatively measure um, what we do, apart from you know really raw numbers like, well, we put this many plants in the ground last year. So yeah, uh, prior to using Connect, our method for recording our works was write it down on a piece of paper. Uh, we had forms that we used for measure for recording uh, the works that we did and how long they'd taken, for recording our plantings and for recording our herbicide use. Uh, and that was great, but in practical terms, it was pretty close to impossible to actually then refer back to that to gain any kind of meaningful information. Um, if you wanted to look up a specific task from a couple of months ago, unless you knew exactly what data had been carried out, you basically had to sort through reams of paper to try and find it. Um, trying to actually cross-reference information to get something like, well, how much herbicide did we use over the whole month of February um, meant even more searching through paper and, and sitting down with a calculator. Uh, and we basically couldn't look at any of this in the field because we had all of it stored back at the office. So starting at the end of last year, uh, we've been trialing digital monitoring. And the way we've been doing that is using uh, iPads. So each team has been given an iPad that they carry in their vehicle out in the field. And on the iPads, we've got the Connect software, uh, which looks approximately like that. Um, so the Connect software uses the iPads GPS to keep track of where we are in the field so that we can easily find the site that we're working at. Uh, and then we use forms within Connect to enter the data we want to enter about whatever task we've been doing. Uh, and the forms in Connect are very customizable. So basically, at the start of this, we were able to go through with Scott, who is Daniel's GIS officer. Um, and basically go, okay, for each task, what's the important data here? Apart from time taken, which we record for everything, you know, what else do we want to know going forward? Uh, there's also a notes field in each form so that you can write down anything else that you think of on the day that seems important and relevant. Uh, so yeah, so we haven't been using Connect for super long yet, but already um, we're definitely noticing advantages to using it. Uh, and the big one is how we're able to then view the data that we collect. So we have a couple of options for that. One is viewing it in Connect uh, in this sort of format. So this is a zoomed out view of all of Banyul. Uh, you can basically see. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, we can zoom in on some. Whoa. Uh, so yeah, so basically each of those little connections of green dots gives you uh, one of the reserves we've been working on. The areas are works that we've done that take up an area. And the dots are sort of specific points where we've done works that we didn't think we needed to record exactly where we'd done them. We just say, well, OK, we were in this area doing this thing. Um, but the other thing we can do with it, um, we've got it hooked into the Xpanair software package on our desktop computers. Uh, and from there, what we can do is filter. So we can say, all right, show me all the works just for this site or all the works just for this date range or other filters. And we can export that information or that data to Excel. And once we have it in Excel, we can start doing searches and doing sorts on the data. And that lets us get very sophisticated with the kind of questions we can ask of it. So for instance, we could go, all right, 
I'd like to know how many man hours I spent on this particular task at this particular site, or I'd like to know how many litres of herbicide I used on this weed uh, in 2016 versus 2017, or you know, for this site, show me all the different species of plants that we've put in the ground um, over the years we've been recording. And so, yeah, that gives us the ability to produce some really sort of organized information, um, which is fantastic for giving us a much clearer picture of past management at the site when we want to look at things like, well, what techniques have we done and, and how has it worked? Um, it's great for when we want to report back to our supervisor and coordinator. We can easily produce reports to show exactly what we've been doing. Uh, and it's fantastic for our coordinator when he wants to then report back to people in council who fund us. Uh, or even to the public in terms of being able to give a much broader view of here's exactly how we're spending the money that you're giving us, here's exactly what we're spending our time on. Uh, so it's important to note that a lot of this is really in potential at the moment. It'll be a lot more useful once we've been using it for a few years and we've really got a few years of data that we can um, coordinate and look through. Um, but in terms of immediate benefits, I've certainly noticed that using it in the field uh, makes it a lot easier to get a sense of what's actually going on and not sort of relying on fallible human memory. So for instance, if we go back to a site and we're noticing a particular weed is dying off, uh, it's really easy to go, all right, which herbicide did we use here again? Or, you know, exactly how long ago did we spray that? Because um, I can just pull out the iPad, it knows exactly where we are. I can just look at all the list of works we've done there and find the relevant one very easily. Uh, so yeah, I'm finding it really fantastic for that. Uh, it hasn't been without challenges. Like any new technology, there's been an adjustment period as we try and uh, get used to the new skills required to use it. Uh, and the initial setup takes quite a bit of technical know-how, so we were, would have been fairly lost without Scott for that one. Um, and another tricky aspect has been really trying to decide what information we needed to collect um, via the forms. So we made a few mistakes early on, things like not actually including herbicide mixes in the lists of possible herbicides that we use or trying to record the, uh, the weight of the uh, loads that we take to the tip in whole tons. Um, but yeah, basically we got around that by having a, a month of field testing where we were using Connect in the field, but not actually um, keeping those records. So we were still recording on paper, but it gave us a chance to trial it and sort of find out what worked and what didn't. Uh, and we're still checking in on a monthly basis to go, all right, are we having any issues? Is it something we can resolve amongst ourselves? Is it something where we need Scott to update one of the forms or add something new in there? Um, and inevitably being technology, sometimes it just doesn't work. So we make sure we have paper and pen with us in the field always. But yeah, mostly it's been a very smooth process and mostly we found that it worked well for us. Um, so yeah, it's been a very positive outcome. Um, and I think it's worth emphasizing that we really are just getting started with this technology. So uh, at the moment, we're only using it to monitor our input into the sites, um, but it has a lot of potential for monitoring outcomes as well. So the next step that we're looking at is uh, investing in some external GPS units that we can then hook into the iPad. And that'll allow us to be a lot more accurate in our GPS measurements. Uh, and once we've got that, then we can look at monitoring individual species um, whether they're significant indigenous species or you know, significant weeds uh, and getting down to the individual plants or to the areas um, covered by a particular species so that we can track changes to size and population over time. Uh, and yeah, we hope that'll let us build up a much clearer picture of what we're actually achieving with the works that we do. Uh, so now I'll pass over to Scott and he can give you an idea of how it works. Thanks, Emma. Um, yeah, Emma, I think Emma picked up on a couple of just really broad points that are important that I think we all know we're in the age of data. We're data's, there's so much data in the world now. So it you know, connects all about making location important and collection of data easy. Um, We've been working with this firm for some time, but there's other people in the marketplace. I'm not here to sell Connect. I'm just here to sell the idea. Um, this just happens to be the product we use. What I'm going to do is just get into our... Um, test system, so I can just go through and create some data for you. Um, and I'll get into my Bush Crew demo. And Bush Crew guys are a really good example where this software, you can make something really complex, really simple for the user. In this form-based software, so this is a location-based system, you know, GIS, you see a map, and sitting behind it's a form builder. You build your own form, whatever fields you want. In the, in the bush crew scenario, 
if I just go to create some data, we get create a point data, I'll just create a bit of point data, we get presented with a form. In that form, let's think there's about, I'm not going to bother counting them, there's about 10 fields. There's actually in this form, in this database that drives the form, I think it's 152 fields of data. So you can tailor it to see what you want to see at a given time, given the answers that are presented at the time. So what it's done here, it's it's at, at the top, and I haven't got a pointer, but you'll see it's it's inherited some data. It's picked up geographically. Well, I'm in this work zone. This I'm in this park. I'm in this whatever you want to whatever you want to do. Um, we can work tasks are probably the most important bit. We can look at different work tasks. So we can do something si simple like they're chipping. All I want to do if they're chipping, they can say, well, it was. I did trees and shrubs and I took an hour. And they can save that data. Simple form. It's a couple of fields done in an instant. We'll do another one. One of my favourites is herbicide. Spraying. Get rid of those weeds and help the indigenous stuff. So if we go to herbicide application, the form will change. We've got a lot more fields now. But they're invisible when you're doing chipping or whatever I did in the first one. Um, so now you can you can um, choose some fields. What's the type of herbicide? It's that one. Um, you know, I'm just going to make up some data. I added some blaze on. I did this. I used the backpack. The rate was, you know, whatever. If I go too fast for the iPad, I'll just put in a number. That'll do. I did it from 9am. I finished at 10.30. It was... Pretty windy, but it was <laughs> overcast, and it was coming from the west, and it took us took us that long. And you can even, if you got voice to text, say, "These are my comments," <laughs> and and then go back and save that. And if I've done all the mandatory fields, it'll be all right. But I've missed a mandatory field, so I can't get out. And I'll put in the herbicide rate of, you know, whatever. Oops, that won't work. And save, and away we go. So whatever, you, you can just mix and match it. So there's a quite a complex form as opposed to a simple form. The same applies, you can draw, we're doing some points. You might want to draw an area where you did some spraying or something. So you can go this little scroll mode over here. And you can draw with your finger and say, there's the area where I did the stuff. And save that. And away we go and create another form. I'll create a really simple one again here. Correctional services. That looks looks like some of these people in this group might apply to. No, they can't say that. Uh, correctional services did some mulching and it took us, you know, they were kept in there a long time because they're under control. And away we go. We've created an object with that data. So it's a really simplistic, usable, hopefully for, for field use, a simple way once it's set up to just collect data and just pre present it exactly how you want it. What I just wanted to show you one other little bit before we might field a couple of questions. If I just change, if I just remember what I'm doing and change to our, we use this for recording all the data on our trees in council as well. You might have an object, and these are just point objects, these trees, and this is just test. There's no tree in that island. But you might want to associate some data. You relate some data to an object. So we've got this, this tree that's here. This tree's, you know, that tree. It's a photo of my keyboard. As you can see, it's test data. Um, so we've got that tree. We might, might now want to relate some data to that tree. So you, you're keeping like a primary record and you're creating all these records. I go back to that point and I monitor the weeds every time. I want to go back to that same object and associate some data and build up a history. So th this is where we might relate some items. So we'll add a related item to this tree. It's picked up some data from the tree itself at the top in those great areas. And we might say it's a proposed task and it's, uh, this one needs live line clearance. Don't worry about the data, it doesn't really matter. It's the principle and it's priority whatever. And we inspected it oops, today and we created by Paul. And we'll take another photo. We'll take this, thank you. That looks very, that's very artistic for me. 
I'm going to use that photo and we're going to go and we're going to save that. And we go back to the map and now we've got a red ring around there. We've just created an object and that's visually you're getting the thing that they've got some data against that object. So, you know, I've got one object there, but, you know, you go back and I could create many, but it now tells me I've got a proposed task that's whatever. You could build up a history of something at that object of you've been there and I've done the monitoring and it was good and I've been there and oh no it's not so good and here's a photo why and, and, and whatever. So um, I think without boring you too much um, there's a very quick run through and connect in that sort of GIS um, form based world. Last thing I did and Emma did mention it so this is a holistic part of, of how we run the data. We use this data to this uh, software rather to collect data in the field. We then put it out to the organisation or groups of the organisation through a desktop GIS. So it automatically feeds overnight. It's It's got a download process. What's collected in the field today, you know, Emma's boss can check tomorrow and, and it does his stats and, and away we go. So um, yeah, there we go. And one last thing, I'm always known to not shut up. Well, I just, and, and it, I think it's important, and, and again, I'm not a Connect salesman, but Connect will run, we're running online now. So it's in the cloud. Database is in the cloud. Um, we're running through the 4G network and doing everything in, in the network. It can run online. It can run semi-online. So you can, if, you, if you go into an area where there's poor 4G, while you're in the 4G, you can say, well, I want to move the map. I'm going in there go offline now and it'll keep the data to where you go where you've got no connection or you can work totally offline so in the in the office you can say well I know I'm going out to um, the little desert I heard mentioned before and I know I'm not going to have any 4G I'm going to load the data onto the device that's for the little desert area then you can get there and do you know, what you've seen happen there collect your data come back out come to the office then load it back up into the into the cloud so now I will shut up <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.